So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, to say I'm excited is an understatement. Superman and Lois season three is just absolutely rocking it. And we've got a great guest. It's Daya Vadia. Daya, welcome to the show, my love. Thank you so much for having me. And congratulations on season three. It, you know what? It's just getting better episode by episode. Are you watching the show yourself um, as it's being aired? Oh, yes. Oh, I, I watch my some people don't watch their stuff. I watch. Oh, yeah. I'm a fan on, on top of it. So I, I love it. I watched last night the the, fun, the episode 10 and it, I, I was so happy with what they did. It's It, it was such a good episode, uh, but we'll get on to that subject in a moment. So let's go back to the beginning, because you know what? This character itself is just an amazing character. What attracted you to the role of Pia at the beginning? Um, well, so interestingly enough, I didn't know that Pia would be on a monopia. When I got the casting, all I knew is that it was a woman who was struggling with cancer. So I, I had no idea what the storyline was going to be. They kept it under wraps. So as it got revealed, I just kept having my mind be blown. <laughs> Every single script I got, I was like, what? What? I mean, I was just as shocked as the audience. I was learning as we were going. I mean, I did a little read. I did the research, but they just took it to a whole nother level. It was, it was exciting every time I read it. <laughs> and we're getting excited episode by episode because, honestly, I've, I've I've got to give credit to the writers, and I'm trying my hardest to get Jay Jameson onto the show because. Oh, you, do, I'll get do, him on there. Oh, do you know what? I, I just think the writing on this show is epic, and compared to other DC shows out out there uh, don't get me wrong they are fantastic but this is just a standalone series that has got so much heart and it's just it's just fantastic i mean were you hes hesitant at all um on joining a superhero show because am i right in saying this is the first superhero related show that you've ever done oh yeah yeah i i've always wanted to though I mean, always since I was, I started acting at 11 and I think I've wanted to be on a superhero show since I was a kid. So it, it, it was like a dream come true, actually, because I, I, I thought it wasn't going to happen. I was kind of like, oh, well, I guess I won't. And so when I found out that she was a superhero, which was random only through the costume uh, designer telling me I needed to be fitted for a super suit. <laughs> That's the only reason I knew. <laughs> I think I, I think I squealed like a little kid when I found out. <laughs> I think I screamed and jumped up and down. And oh, yeah, I mean, I was so, so thrilled. I mean, Beyond. once you once you booked uh, the role, uh, did you watch the previous seasons or, w or were you already a fan of the show? Um, I binge watched. I, I hadn't watched the previous seasons, but I just I always watch the shows or even in the same genre, I will watch. I, I really get in, I like to get into the world. So before I even came to set, I literally every single day watched two or three episodes. I just immerse myself into it and I, I became a fan. I loved it. I was like, oh, this is really good. So then I became even more excited. And you can imagine when I show up to set and I'd just been watching everybody, you know, intensely. So you know, you're an actor, but you're also a fan. And then you get to enter the world and, it was surreal. It was incredible when I first worked with Tyler. Mm. I was standing in front of him like, yeah, that's Superman. Hello. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, and he's such a sweet guy and he's so generous and bitsy too. And so we we just had fun playing and it was just a, a, an incredible experience. I mean, after season two, um, I've got to say the end of season, season two is probably one of the best episodes I've ever seen in my whole life. So I, oh. I, I thought to myself... How are they going to top this? Because season two was incredible. And again, a credit to the right writers. They're taking characters on a journey that we haven't seen before or expected. Um, so at what point, I know obviously you went for the role of Pia to begin with. And so what point did you actually find out that you were going to play on on a matter Pia, um, you know, in that pro, pro process? Was it after you got the role and then they said that or... Was that part of the audition process? So when I was auditioning, the role's name was Anna, A-N-A. -A. So even that wasn't Pia yet. Um, because again, they're keeping everything so secret. I think they they know that the fans are are, are very savvy. 
So I don't think they wanted anything to leak. So I read as Anna got the part that I did. I just got the part. I didn't know anything else. And then when I got uh, our people got an email on the top, this is literally how it happened. On the top of the reference was Anna Monopia. And my manager called me and said, casting just sent this thing over from the uh, wardrobe people that says automatopia and we googled it and then the automatopia and we were like wait a minute wait a minute is this it was literally like that and it wasn't until i sat down and had a meeting with the writers that they confirmed then they told me okay so here's the deal you're automatopia and they gave me the full mythology and the full background and i just sat there and was like are you kidding me Wait, wait, what? That's how it hit me. Them telling me over a Zoom, just like this, that, so by the way, you're going to be on a monopoly and you're going to be a super villain and you're going to be fighting Superman. And I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it, it took me a second to process. And I was like, how did you know I could battle? <laughs> there you like, go. How did you know you I could battle? I was like, I could battle, but how'd they know? <laughs> and you certainly can. You certainly can, and 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 I'm definitely on Team Pia, believe it or not. Uh, but how far in advance um, do you know what's in store for your character through the season? I mean, is it episode by episode, or or, or do you find out the the whole story arc? Um, it's pretty much episode by episode. I only knew a couple of things that they were maybe planning for the end, but again, they kept it very vague. Um, because I think they're also writing and changing as they go. So um, I would find out as we got the scripts. And so sometimes, you know, you're just waiting. You're literally waiting for the scripts to come to see what is going to happen. And I will tell you that the moment this last episode, now I can finally talk about it. When he gives me the syringe, I had no idea that was going to happen. None. I had no idea they were going to revive me then. I thought I would die. I, I, I just assumed I'm going to die and it's going to be really. And so when I got the script and it was like, no, the ser me, I think Chad called me. No, literally Chad called me that night and said, did you read the script? Die. Did, you, did you read episode 10? I said, no, wait, what? And then I'm reading it. And he's like, oh my God. I mean, we, that's what it's like. We're, we're talking as cast members and going, can you believe the script? It's, and then he does like explosion emojis on my text. <laughs> you know what? We're geeked out just like the fans. He's like, damn, chat, Bruno is doing this and P is gonna. I mean, that I would say we were like kids in a candy store, me and Chad. Chad and I got along really well and we had a lot of fun because we both were so excited all mm. the time. It's nice to work with someone who's excited, you know? Mm. I mean, I've got to say, from last night's episode, for me, the one scene was when Lois comes into the room and it's after. Uh, Spence comes in and and your head's turned away and then you turn and face her and yeah. on, honestly it's like whoa something's gonna happen now and obviously I don't want to spoil it for anyone that hasn't seen the episode yet but wow it's just an amazing episode it really really is I mean we are we obviously know Kevin Smith created the character um, but he also quoted that it wouldn't work outside the comic medium how wrong was he I mean, he's probably thinking now, well, maybe I should have had a stab at that. Uh, have you had any feedback from Kevin at all? Has he reached out to you? Um, you know, what's interesting is just last week I was hanging out with Jay, Jay Jameson, the writer uh, who created, who basically was the one who pitched Automatopoeia in the first place. I don't know if you knew that, but he's mm. the one that pitched the idea season one, and then they ended up doing it in season three. And he said he ran into Kevin Smith and actually got some feedback that he has seen it a little bit. And he was actually like, okay, you guys did a really good job. He gave us like a, and I said, he did? He said, yep. So that was that was a good affirmation because we were all kind of needling him like, oh, you think we can't do it? Oh, you think she can't be on screen? <laughs> you know, we were needling him the whole time. Like we took it as a challenge that you think that something vocal auditory power can't be visual. That's mm -hmm. why I think they did a good job of making an auditory power so incredibly visual that that was what was fun i mean he also said in a recent interview with comicbook.com that he would love to direct you in an episode he would like to get involved in some way or form onto the show because obviously he's di directed quite a few episodes of super supergirl 
Um, so he's no stranger to the DC universe. So, so who knows in the future? He might be uh, di- directing you on set. So obviously this character, you know, the background, uh, there's, there's, there's not much in, in the comics as, as obviously Pia. I mean, how, how do you develop a character? I mean, how much of your character that we see on screen is from Paige? And how much is it from you pers- personally developing it? Um, That's a good question. I think it's a combination. I kind of work by, I take everything in the story and everything the writers have written. And then I, everything I develop is from the story. So I kind of use that as my muse, but I'm very physical because I was a dancer. I was a dancer for many years. And so for me, uh, characters are always physical. So I start with a physical body and I kind of was had, I'll tell you who I had in my head was alien, the mother Sigourney Weaver's alien. Mm. That was my kind of inspiration along with what is on the page and what I, the research I'd done on her and just the, the, you know, the, the world along with alien. I feel like she's a mother protecting her young. (laughs) She, she doesn't want to kill people. She just, (laughs) I mean, you know, she doesn't want to, I don't want to kill you, but you're going to, if you're going to come after my child or my family, I'm going to protect myself. That's what it was with Steel. You know, when when Wole's character comes in, you know, I like them. Mm. I love his daughter. But listen, at the end of the day, if you're threatening my family, I'm going to defend them. That's what it's about. So Definitely. I had fun creating that. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what? Never cross a mother. Uh, no. They are scary. Never. My wife, I would never cross her in a million years. I really wouldn't. Um, so you join the cast, um, obviously, in season three. So it's, it's, it's an established cast. I mean, what was it like to join all these cast members that have already done this show for two se- seasons? I mean, you've mentioned Tyler and you've mentioned Bitsy. What was it like joining that cast after two seasons in? Um, they are an incredibly lovely class. They're so great because most of the time, I'm going to be honest, when I get on shows or if you're guesting, it's tricky. It's kind kind of like the new kid in high school. You know, you're like the new kid on, in the lunchroom and you're trying to sit with and you're like, hello. Um, so that can be a dynamic, but I will say that this set wasn't like that. They were very loving and warm and accepting. So I kind of like, they took me in right away. And that, so that made it easier. We'll lay and specifically Sophia and Wole and me and Chad and Spence, we kind of just like clicked. So we're dancing on the set, we're acting silly. It was it was more that kind of energy. So I felt comfortable pretty, pretty quickly. It was a very, and the crew is awesome. So it wasn't any like attitudes. Mm. Like a lot of times you run into the Hollywood attitudes and there was none of that, thank God. <laughs> Cause that's I hard. Mean- I mean, I've got to say, I mean, I've I, I've literally interviewed every member of the cast, uh, with exception of Tyler and 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 Bitsy, which I'm crossing my fingers for, because uh, I've been a good boy all year, so it's on my <laughs> Christmas list. Um, and I've got to say, everyone just seems super nice. They they just seem just a, a, like a big family. Um, yeah. But no superhero show is the same without the super villains. Uh, I have my own thoughts but do you feel that your character and bruno mannheim are truly villains oof i don't know i don't i don't consider myself a villain i mean as the character i don't when i'm playing her don't think of myself as a villain at all i like i said i'm just defending my family and i i i mean it's complicated there's some stuff that's coming up that you have to watch where she grapples with decisions but I think, and I've said this, I think the true villain of the season is cancer. Mm. That's to me the true villain. I think that's really what this this season is about. And no matter what powers you have, and no matter how vast you think you are, when you hit that disease, it challenges you more than anything. And I think that everyone who watches can relate to that because everyone is touched somehow by cancer. Mm. So that would that's the true villain. Definitely, definitely. And and I've got to say, I mean, my my view on the Mannheims is that they're doing all the wrong things for the right reasons. Exactly. Um, I just exactly. think they're just misunderstood. This is why I love villains uh, sometimes more than the superheroes, because there are so many layers to villains. There's so mm-hmm. many back so much backstory and and motivation there for for them to do the things that they do. 
and it's just so interesting. It really, really is. And I and I asked the same question to Chad. Um, you mentioned it early, early, earlier on, being around Tyler as as, as su- Superman. What was it like, you know, toe to toe, battling with Superman? How cool was that? Oh, the best, the absolute best. He he's so great mm. because the thing about Tyler is he has an insane work ethic. Insane. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't complain. He's in this suit. He's doing more than everybody. And he never complains. He's like the the team captain who's like, let's go, guys. So when you're in front of him, he is giving you 150%. And as Superman, obviously, that's a lot of energy. (laughs) And so you have to match it or go more. And you better do it. Like you just, he, I feel like he brought out the best in everybody because he's such a, um, he's kind of such a presence. Mm. And he takes that role seriously. He doesn't just phone it in ever. Like when he's doing those jumping things and he's doing, and he gave me tips also on how to like, there's, you know, kind of technical things on how you fly, how you jump into and how you, there's all these technical elements that he was able to show me. So I just think he, he taught me a lot. I really learned a lot from him. I mean, there's, there's a lot of responsibility on taking on, on the cape because Superman is loved by millions world world worldwide um let's talk lois lane because on your on-screen relationship is so heartwarming at the beginning (laughs) and i feel that there is definitely a bond there but in testament to the writers we're hit with a bit of a twist um do you feel that even after last night's episode there is a well there's still a bond there uh when it's going to matter because as honestly i don't feel that pia is a bad person but Do you think that that bond will still be there further in the season if anything else happens? Um, I think we have to watch and find out. I will tell you that the hardest thing to shoot was in the hallway and how I'm feeling about her as I decide to blow up. I don't want to give spoilers, but who haven't watched it, but so close your ears when I say this. (laughs) Okay. I, when I blow up the, um, to get into the tech room, that moment was really tough because finding my relationship with her while I do these acts, but I still care about her was Mm. tricky as an actor. And, and I like stuff like that. I was really trying to play with how do you, you know, cause we, again, we all feel that when you care about someone, but you have to do what you have to do again for your family, for yourself. And sometimes that's not going to please everybody. How Mm. do you act in a way that you have to, even though it's not going to make someone else, you're almost a villain in someone else's story and you have to be. Mm. You know what I mean? Sometimes you have to be a villain in someone else's story. And that's yeah. just the way it is. And you have to sometimes own that. And that, I really had fun playing with that. And when she and I talked about it, and she's a good person to do that with because she understands that, I think, as a human, better than me. Mm. Like, she just gets that dynamic better. So I, I feel like she and I were able to play that. You know, Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I just can't wait to see... You know, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think Lois is, is the, the, the relationship I see is that Lois sees the good in Pia, and yes. I think that later on, I just hope that they can find common ground, common ground again. Because, as you mentioned earl, earl, earlier, the true villain in this show is cancer, and it's, and it's extremely brave for a superhero show to address this. Um, and as as an actor, um, going from Anamatopia, um, you know, to a loving wife and a devoted uh, mother, um, you know, dealing with cancer, how was that? Because uh, me pers- personally, I found this show so helpful because sadly, just before season three started, I lost my dad to cancer and oh, wow. and my mum, she's in stage four cancer as well. And oh, wow. literally, um, it has brought me to tears watching the show, but in sort of a way, a healing way, I think. And, you know, it, it, you know, I, I, well, I hope you don't mind me saying that you've had your own journey as, as, as well. So, you know, mm-hmm. how difficult was it for you to portray someone on screen, you know, with cancer? Um, and, and, and what was that experience experience like? Oh, wow. Well, first of all, condolences and, and also for what you're battling now, because I also have been the patient and I've also been the caretaker and my, I, I, my dad had also died of cancer 
And so when I always say, just so you know, it was harder being the caretaker. Mm. So it goes to caretakers because it's really tough. And when I was a patient, you're just, you know, you're just trying to live and everyone else, it's really hard for them to take care of you because they don't have the power. So I would say that that was the, the journey was really cathartic. As you just said, when you watched, mm. it brought up so much. That's the same thing that happened to me while mm. I was doing it. It was bringing up a lot of real emotions and real memories inside while I was shooting it. So, you know, when those things come up, you're processing mm. and that in that processing, you're dealing with everything you've gone through and that is healing. That's the only way you can heal. You definitely don't heal by cover. I mean, you know, there's a time and place for it, but it, it, unfortunately you have to face all the, the pain and everything that happens. And I think art is the best way to do that in mm. art where you can kind of go on the journey and you can experience this stuff without you completely being there. It helps. And there were a lot of breakdowns. I'm going to be honest. Mm. There were breakdowns on set. All of us. It was, it was a moving season. Everybody was like, whoa. And so I'm, I thank you for saying that you were touched and I hope that, you know, you can get some solace through it. I mean, I mean, it, you know, there were scenes that were diff, diff, difficult to uh, watch, but the way, again, it's been written and what we see on screen, it, it can be truly, you know, heart wrenching, but beautiful at the same time, because... You know, I, I just like the fact that we're seeing this journey with Lois and your character and the way that Lois is being supported by Clark. I just think it's quite nice to see that on our screens. How important do you do you feel it is to 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 see that on our screens being addressed? Yeah, especially the the love. Mm. I think I think it's really important to see that what helps heal you is love. And it's not corny to say that it's truly what the love and support of the people who care for you is what makes you survive. Even if it's just surviving a few more days or a few more weeks or not, you know, or even in your transition to what I say is if you, if you pass that love that surrounds you is what it's all about. And it's the thing that you will hold with you at forever forever you take that with you and that was what will guide you in life and i and i think that the love they show between lois and clark is just palpable i really i was i was crying while watching that i was like geez the writers <laughs> really, you're right the writers went there mm. they did. i mean i mean the scene at the end of that episode where he takes her and flies her up to the skies and then oh. arm in arm and i'm like wow this is like the notebook all over again <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> Honestly, I was in tears. I really was, but I'm not ashamed to say. Um, so, so you, you know, the, the the visual effects on this show is absolutely breathtaking. So, what is it like to film your scenes um, and then see all those visual effects? Because you said that, you know, Kevin Smith said, it, you know, it'd be difficult to to have it outside the me medium of comics. But those scenes that you're in, especially fighting against Superman. Are literally epic and it's just yeah. amazing what is it like to you know from filming the scene to actually seeing the finished article oh yeah that, that was another moment of me having a pinch me you know like one of those pinch me moments i was having that on set as well during during the visual effects because first of all the stunts the stunt mm. stunts were crazy that's the scene again when i entered the tech room the the amount of choreography that goes into the stunts to create that was incredible rob hater like the stunt coordinator is incredible and then what happens is is i've worked on my character already what i'm going to do and then i asked the person who's going to do the after visual effects okay so am i in the vicinity can you add to it and he's the one that said to me you go full out you just do what you do and i'm going to just add to it and so i was like okay because I, I I can go there. I was like, are you sure? And he's like, no, go for it. And that was when I created kind of the, the alien character. Then they added all of the visual in which I just saw. Again, I hadn't seen that. The, the after, and I, I just think they did a, an amazing job. That I think that's what makes it. But they helped give me permission. You know what I mean? Like I had to have the permission because I wasn't sure if it would work. And they were the ones who were like, no, no, no. Go, we've already seen the dailies, go for it, go all the way, we we love it, just do it. And I was like, all right. And then they take a lot of pictures of you so that they can create a digital you. Like they create, there's so much involved. The digital 
effects are just amazing. I mean, the what the they you know that's a that's its own art form in of itself. It really is. And have you managed to keep any mementos from this season, or is it all kept under lock and key? Ooh, momentum. Well, definitely pictures. I, which I can't, you know, I, I will be, I release on my Instagram little by little because I was documenting as I went, like, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this, but I'm going to take a picture. I mean, I took pictures and I did hold on to the scripts. And then I got a special um, stunt department sweatshirt. Me and Chad were gifted. Oh, this best, like awesome sweatshirt by Rob. And that was really nice. And he just said, Hey, you guys are in the family. And you know, we just were such a team and that meant a lot. So I, I'm, you know, I, I don't even wear it. I'm just like, want to like frame it. It was, it was, yeah. Oh, and I got a tattoo. Oh, wow. What, <laughs> I got a what? tattoo. Just, just you or, you or, or, or was it like a Lord of the Rings, you know, <laughs> cast, cast thing where you all got them? Well, I wish I was trying to get Chad to get one too. No, I was just, it was just me when I was in Canada after my last day of shooting. I just went and did it because it was just such a, you know, incredible experience. I wanted to just kind of, and I don't have it. I I've never had a tattoo. It was my very really? first one. Oh wow! Yeah. And oh, so wow. and and so I was like, you know, and I will tell you because since you just said that about your your family, my dad when he passed away of cancer, he said, "I'll always be with you through space, time, and infinity." And what was crazy is when I first got into my hotel room and I opened the window of my hotel room, right in front of me was a massive infinity sign. I swear to God, <sighs> it was a lit up infinity sign. And I was like, <gasps> this is and the whole time I was on set, I could feel, I kept seeing infinity signs. And I was like, this is crazy. This is weird. And my dad died of cancer. I had cancer and then infinity signs. And then when I went to get my tattoo, the guy was from the same, my dad was Indian. And the guy who did my tattoo was from the same town that my dad was from. What? And so I infinity sign. Oh, that's on my amazing. Uh, that's a yeah. coinc coincidences like that are just just aston aston astonishing. They really, really are. Um, yeah. Right, I've got. I'm looking at the time. I've got one more quest yeah. question for you. Yeah. Uh, so, without your NDA exploding, um, <laughs> what can we look forward to for the rest of the se season? You don't have to tell us obviously what's going to happen, but what sort of ride are we expected to experience? Well, like you were saying before, how I don't know how we're going to, um, you know, top last season's massive episode of worlds colliding and square worlds meeting round worlds. <laughs> I didn't know how they were going to top that. But uh, we're going to have some things that I think just might rival that level of power. I just will say that the level of power that Anamanapia has inside of her, you, you've never seen before. Like that, her level of power is insane so let's see what let's let's see what happens <laughs> thing is superman finally has got a villain that is equal in my eyes literally mm -hmm. anyone that can force superman to his knees um i think is just fantastic to see without but, kryptonite, without kryptonite and that's another thing she does yeah. it without kryptonite which is huge <laughs> exactly but Di, you've been a great guest thank you so much for coming on to the show it's a massive honor and i cannot wait for the rest of the season stay safe and um, keep super thank you so much take care